I believe that in the past you had experience of another illness, in fact yeah. another cancer. And I'm wondering how things compared at that time. Very different. Um, about 15 years ago, something like that, uh, I had a thyroid problem. Uh, I'd been going regularly to the hospital to get it checked because it was a, a multinodular thyroid, so it was very obvious. And then it swelled into more of a goiter uh, and I went to the stage where I was running around like a blue bottle and not sleeping more than about three hours a night. Uh, and they decided to remove the thyroid, uh, which they did. And then when I went back after the, the surgery, I was told that there was actually a small cancer in that. Mm. Uh, and that was the first I'd even thought that it might be a cancer. In fact, I hadn't thought about cancer at that point at all. So to be told that was quite shocking. Yes. Um, and I found that very difficult because I couldn't tell my sister mm. about what? it. Uh, and I didn't want anybody to know. Mm. And I have no idea why I didn't, but I didn't. Was it the culture then about cancers that people didn't talk about them as much? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. I think, you know, people think, oh, cancer, or, you know, she's not going to be around. Mm. Uh, and again, I'm not, I've been very lucky mm. because I was told it was small. It hadn't spread. I didn't need any further treatment. And it was something that um, generally wasn't lethal in that sense. Um, and, and again, I mean, that's 15 years or so ago. Uh, so I go for regular checkups annually on that one, uh, and uh, touch wood, things are fine. Do you think there is a stigma in society about um, cancer that, that prevents people really talking about it openly? I think, I think people are scared of cancer, and they're scared of how you are going to respond to having had the diagnosis. I think they're very concerned about what should they do in that situation? How should they then relate to you? How should they speak to you? Do you want to talk about it? Do you not want to talk about it? Uh, and I think all of those make it very difficult for people to know how to handle it. Mm. So in a sense, there's two things. There's how do you feel in yourself about telling yeah. information, you know, giving information yeah. which is quite personal. Yeah. But there's also what is the reception from others and that's yes. somewhat unpredictable. Yes. For example, some yeah. people might be very supportive and want to be there all the time. Yeah. Some people might avoid you because they think, well, I'm not sure yes. what to say. Yes, almost as if it's contagious. And it, it, it's, I don't think it, it's other than the fact that they don't know how to handle it. You know, I, mm. I, um, and, and you're having to handle it as well, you know, so you've got that, that dual kind of thing. How do you handle it? And how do you handle it with regard to those people who are around you? Uh, and, and I think that's a very personal thing. I mean, if, if people have been around being too touchy-feely and supportive with me, I would not have liked it mm. uh, because it doesn't suit me. Uh, other people it might have done, yeah. you know. We certainly come across other people ourselves who are not sure what to say, whether to yeah. reveal that diagnosis. Yeah. And we've had people in the program who've chosen not to say anything about their yeah. diagnosis, even to their family. Yeah, I say, in, in the, first, the first diagnosis, I just didn't know how to tell my sister. Yes. Uh, for the second one, she was with me. And she came with, she the, came to with me with to, you to the appointment, to the appointment uh, because we had both got the impression when we were called back after, we, I had two endoscopies. When we were called back after the, the first one, very quickly, I thought alarm bells started to ring and I thought, oh yeah, this is too quick. This is, um, yeah, there's something here that I need to be aware of. And so she came with me to the second one and she came with me to speak to David Bowery, the surgeon, uh, and uh, throughout it, really. Is that a tip for viewers that Ideally, it would be nice to bring somebody to their appointment. I think it's quite helpful, yes, uh, because it, it's another pair of ears as well mm. to hear what's going on. Because when you hear that cancer, you're not always sure that you've heard everything that goes after it. No. Uh, and, and therefore, to have a second pair of ears there listening and, and just sort of absorbing things. I used to write things down 
because it, that helped me. And, and any questions I had, I would write out a whole list of questions in my, my little blue book that I took with me when I went to speak to people just, you know, to make sure I was okay with it. As a kind of aid to communication? Yes, yes. And did that help? Or yes. yes. Oh, it did. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because again, in that situation, you can't always remember things. That's right. I'm afraid. Because mm. it's a stressful situation in general, yes. even the follow-up appointments. Yes. Oh, yeah. So yes. having uh, thought about it in advance and then taking a kind of checklist, Yes. it yeah. um, helps keep the focus on what is important for you at that time, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And also having a relative there helps. Yeah. But yeah. would you believe that about 30% of people who attend their appointments here locally for their cancer, uh, either diagnosis or follow-up, come on their own? I did the first time. Mm. So, yes, quite, I would believe quite a that. Few do hmm. come on their own. I did. I yeah. And there is a question in the hospital: Should we be helping people who don't have someone to ask at that time? Should we be giving them an advocate, in a sense, um, from from the hospital resources? I'm not sure I can answer that one. Um, as I say, the first time I did it on my own, the second time I took my sister, so I'm not sure what the answer to that is. Um, I tend to think that you would, people would tell you if they needed something, I think. Hopefully, hopefully that's the yeah. case. Do you feel that the um, society, society has changed its attitude to cancer over the decades that have gone recently? Yes, I do. I do. I think back to when my mum and my dad died from mm. it. It's a very different sort of culture mm. to, to today. And again, I think that's because there's an awful lot of media representation of uh, the risks and how to check. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an, a lot of um, at work and, and information that comes out about success rates and such like. So I think people are better informed about it mm -hmm. uh, and that maybe helps. What did you notice when you my parents were uh, unwell with it, with the cancer. What what cancers were they? Uh, well, Dad died of lung cancer, but I, I was only eighteen, so mm -hmm. I was kind of not taken into it. People didn't say you weren't warned that this was cancer. Nobody told you. So when my father died, we were only told afterwards. Whether that was because we were young, I don't. I don't think it was. I think it was people didn't say. Yeah. And again with mother. We knew something was very badly wrong, but we were not actually told. And as a result of that, I think we made choices with her and for her that we might have made differently had we been aware of them. What condition did she have? Um, we're not absolutely sure. She, she died with multiple uh, cancers. Mm. Um, because they had to have a post-mortem for her. Yeah. But I, so I don't really know where it started, to mm. be honest. Mm. Uh, what do you think about the way cancel's hand, handled in the media and um, in organisations, you know, voluntary organisations these days? I don't know about voluntary organisations as much. In the media, I, th I think it is, it seems to be less scary in the media somehow. It seems to be, you know, these are the risks and these are the possible outcomes. I, I think it's more a bit demystified. Yes. Uh, and I think that does help. Yeah.